Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss the common skin condition called acne vulgaris, more commonly just called acne. So, an outline for this video then. We're going to start by uh, having a look at this picture that we've got here and identifying some of the different lesions or spots that are associated with acne. Then what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the pathogenesis of acne, and by discussing the pathogenesis, we will see how the different types of spots in acne uh, actually fit into the pathogenesis and what they actually are. So by discussing the pathogenesis, I hope that you'll gain an understanding of what the different types of lesions associated with acne actually are. And then we'll end the video by discussing some of the main uh, medical treatments available for acne. So let's begin then by having a look at our picture here. So this picture shows very well two out of the three different types of acne lesions. Um, the third type isn't really shown on this picture, but I'm going to be cheeky and add it in. So let's start with the ones that actually are present here. So the main type um, is, of course, this type. So this is an example, and obviously there are many more examples on this picture. So, this type of spot here, this red one, this is what we will call an inflammatory papule. It is inflamed, it's an inflamed lesion, whereas the other two main types of lesion associated with acne are non-inflammatory lesions. Now, a papule, in dermatology, this word papule, it means a spot a raised spot, in contrast to the word macule, which means a flat spot. So if you have a spot on your skin, if it is raised above the surface of the rest of the skin, that is called a papule. If it is not raised uh, and it's in line with the rest of the surface of the skin, that's called a macule. There is another word that you should know, which is nodule, and a nodule is the same as a papule, it's a raised spot, but nodules are bigger than papules. Uh, so when you've got a very, very large raised spot, you would refer to that as a nodule uh, rather than a papule. So for instance, if you had a spot that was greater than one centimetre in diameter, you would refer to that as a nodule. That's a very large raised spot. Uh, you'd refer to that as a nodule rather than as a papule. Whereas if you had a much smaller raised spot, you'd refer to that as a papule. So, uh, macules are not really associated with acne. Acne inflammatory lesions are going to be inflammatory papules or, if they're really, really bad and large, inflammatory nodules. Uh, so the main terminology that we would use for most of these uh, that are demonstrated here is inflammatory papules. So this is an inflammatory papule, this is an inflammatory papule, this is an inflammatory papule, this one, etc. This one is looking rather large. You might like to refer to that as an inflammatory nodule if you wanted to. Okay, uh, and when we discuss the pathogenesis, you'll see actually what these things are. So for now, just be happy that you can see them on the picture and you know their name. Okay, so now we want to discuss the other type of lesion that's shown well in this picture. And this one's more subtle. If you don't look carefully, you might miss it. So this is another type of spot that's associated with acne. Very, very important one. This one's actually more fundamental to the pathogenesis of acne than this one. This one's further along in the pathogenesis. This one's more foundational. It comes first. So I'm talking about this thing here. Now you can see that this isn't red. This is the same colour as the rest of the skin. And the reason that it's not red is that it's not inflamed. It's a non-inflammatory acne spot or acne lesion. So what is the fancy name for this? But you can see that the, that is a clearly raised portion of the skin. So what's the name for this type of spot? So this type of spot is called a closed comedone, or at least that's the fancy uh, dermatology name for it. The more common layman's term for it is to call it a white head. So this is a white head spot, or a closed comedone. And again, at this point, we're just labelling it, and I just want you to be able to see it on the picture. Dermatology is all about looking. 
Um, so just to give you a few more examples, you can see that there are loads of these. So here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. You can continue on in the picture and you can identify many more closed comedones or whiteheads. So this picture shows lots of inflammatory, um, inflammatory papules and some even inflammatory nodules, and it shows lots of closed comedones. The type of acne lesion that it does not show so well is the open comedone. If you have a closed comedone, you must also have an open comedone. Open comedones are what are more commonly called blackheads. And as you can see on this picture, we don't really have that many examples of blackheads. In fact, I would struggle to point to a single one on that picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black colour and I'm going to draw one on so that we've got an example. So these look like tiny little black spots like so. So I've drawn one there. So this is our example then of an open comedone, a blackhead on this picture. And again, for now, I just want you to be able to identify it on a picture. If you wish, you can go on to Google and type in acne and you can look at the many different pictures that come up there and you can try and identify these three different types of lesions, the inflammatory papules and nodules, and then the closed comedones and the open comedones, the whiteheads and the blackheads. And as I said earlier, and I think I'll change to a different colour, I'm getting fed up of red. So these two, the closed comedones and the open comedones, these are non-inflammatory lesions. So I'll just write that here. So these are non-inflammatory lesions, whereas obviously the inflamed uh, papules and nodules, they are inflammatory lesions. Okay, so that's what they look like on a picture. Now what we're going to talk about is how these three different types of acne lesions actually fit into the pathogenesis of acne. So to discuss the pathogenesis of acne, we need to have a basic understanding of the anatomy of the skin. So the first thing to do is just draw a basic picture of the anatomy of the skin. So for this, I will have, um, let's go for a purple colour. So basic anatomy, and we're going really basic here. So the skin has two different layers, which are the outer layer, which is the epidermis, and then the uh, layer that's underneath the epidermis, the supporting layer to the epidermis, which is the dermis. So this outer layer here, this is the epidermis, so this is the epidermis, um, and the layer underneath is the dermis. Right, so just to make this absolutely crystal clear, this is the outside world, and this is the inside of your body. So underneath the dermis would, of course, be uh, the layer of subcutaneous fat um, that is different thicknesses depending on uh, your body habitus. So, just a few then little facts about uh, the epidermis and the dermis, just a few things to point out. You can see that the um, interface between the epidermis and the dermis is not flat. Instead, it's got this sort of wavy-like pattern, and that is so that the epidermis and the dermis are very well held together, and you don't get the sort of epidermis sliding over the dermis. Instead, they're very well fixed together. Another very important thing to point out is that the epidermis is not a single cell thick, it's many layers thick. There are loads and loads of different layers of cells in the epidermis. And remember, the ones on the surface are really, really sort of flat, pancake-like cells that are full up of a hard protein called keratin, and they are producing the hard outer surface of the skin that is defending your body from the harsh realities of the outer world. Whereas the cells at the bottom of the epidermis, down here, that are very close to the dermis beneath, they are the stem cells. They're the cells that will be dividing and splitting into two cells. One cell will remain a stem cell and will remain on the bottom, and the other cell will then move upwards and gradually turn into one of these pancake cells that's full of keratin. And the reason that we need, of course, the stem cells at the bottom to be continuously dividing is because we're always losing the cells from the outer surface of the epidermis that being shed off continuously. So this is continuously being replaced by those very important stem cells at the base of the epidermis. Okay, so all we need to know is that the epidermis is lots of layers thick and it's continuously shedding. 
The dermis is the um, supporting layer, so underneath is where we have things like blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, nerves, uh, things like that are underneath here, and it's made up of lots of connective tissue, so it's supporting the epidermis. It's giving nutrients, for instance, from the blood vessels uh, that are supporting the uh, cells of the epidermis. Okay, now... The star of the show, as far as the pathogenesis of acne is concerned, are the things called sebaceous glands. So the whole reason that we're discussing the structure of the skin is so that we can discuss what are sebaceous glands. Now, sebaceous glands produce an oily substance called sebum. So these glands, their produce is sebum. And sebum is secreted onto the surface of the skin, so onto the surface of the epidermis, and it's an oily substance that is the skin's natural moisturiser. Okay, unfortunately, it is also responsible for the pathogenesis of acne. But, as we'll see when we study the pathogenesis, it's not really the foundational problem in acne. The foundational problem is a phenomenon called hyperkeratinization, which we'll see in a moment. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is the distribution of the sebaceous glands, because this is something that confuses people. Sebaceous glands are associated with hair follicles. They are um, they are stuck on the side of hair follicles and they secrete their sebum into hair follicles. Now, this confuses people because people then think, well, I have acne, let's say, on my forehead, but my forehead doesn't have hairs on it, does it? So how, how is this happening? Because sebaceous glands are only associated with hairs. So surely... I can't have acne on my forehead if it doesn't have hairs. So here is the truth that you need to nail into your brain. Your forehead does have hairs. It just has absolutely tiny little hairs that you cannot see. Most of your skin is covered by tiny little hairs that you cannot see. And these hairs will be stacked in hair follicles that will have sebaceous glands. So... You have to nail into your head the idea that most of your skin is covered by hairs. Obviously, some of your skin has macroscopic hairs that you can actually see. So, for instance, arms, legs, especially in boys, will be covered by macroscopic hairs. Um, whereas other portions of your body, they still have hairs, but the hairs are tiny and you can't actually see them. There are actually very few portions of skin that don't have hairs at all, and those special portions of skin that don't have any hairs at all, those are known as glabrous skin areas. And the two main examples of glabrous skin, i.e. skin that has no hairs, are the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. So those are the two places that you absolutely cannot get acne. The palms of the hands and the soles of the feet, because they are the places where you do not have uh, hair follicles, and therefore you do not have sebaceous glands. Okay, so, um, next thing that I want to do is actually draw a hair follicle then for you. 